Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Strontium is a mineral and it has many similarities with the mineral calcium, especially when it comes to bone. And strontium has been shown to reduce the rate of bone loss while improving the rate of bone formation making strong bones, and it works in the newly formed bone. The caveat with strontium is you take it at a separate time from calcium because they will attach to each other and you're not going to absorb either. You could take calcium with food. In fact, that's a perfect time to take your calcium. Strontium has to be taken away from food. So welcome to our episode, Strontium, a mineral for bone loss. This first report is the journal Current Opinions in Pharmacology, so it's a pharmacy journal. It's from INSERM in Paris, France. INSERM is a huge institution. It has over 100 different departments. It's loaded with thousands and thousands of medical doctors and scientists and other researchers. And here's what they write. Clinical studies, so that means studies in people. Preclinical means studies in animals but clinical studies means studies in people. Clinical studies show that strontium ranolate reduces the risk of vertebral and non-vertebral fractures in postmenopausal osteoporosis. So let me translate for you. Um, this is a strontium injection that they use in Europe. We use a strontium capsule called strontium citrate in America. So um, non-vertebral means um, fractures outside of the spine and vertebral means fractures within the spine and postmenopausal you know what that means and that's when women really lose their bone right so they said recent advances advances point to unique effects of strontium ranolate on bone cells and show that strontium ranolate has significant clinical benefits in the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis so that's bone loss in older women now they're talking about strontium ranolate it's a prescription over in europe it's it's an injection so here's a, uh, a journal, the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research. This is from the University of Antwerp. And they're talking all about strontium. And they said strontium was first isolated in 1808 and named after Strontian, a Scottish town where it was found at high concentrations in calcareous rocks. Now, they want to say strontium is a natural constituent of foods and beverages. So meat and chicken and poultry, vegetables and fruit have very low amounts of strontium. So when you eat asparagus or you eat lettuce, you're getting some. Whereas it's in higher amounts in grains like whole grain cereals and seafood. So they go on, and this is why I say this, hence the strontium content of the human diet and the daily intake varies according to where you live and the type of food you eat. Well, that makes sense. So now they're talking about strontium metabolism, which means how it's absorbed, where it goes, how it's disposed of from the body. So they said the gastrointestinal absorption of strontium largely depends on age and may vary from 90% of the element's dietary intake in infants to only 10% in the elderly. So when you're eating vegetables and chicken and whole wheat cereal, um, young people absorb a lot more than elderly people. And it's important because strontium is really important for your bones. Um, With the exception of infants, it can generally be stated that strontium is absorbed to a lower extent than calcium. So there you go, you absorb more calcium than strontium. Well, that's okay because the bones have a higher content of calcium than they do strontium. And let me just point this out. Calcium goes into developed bone that's already existing. Strontium helps create a wider bone more new bone tissue that's good because later on the calcium can get in there and make bones wider not just stronger Um, then they say that the intestinal absorption of strontium 
increases under fasting conditions. So that means you take your strontium in between meals and is negatively affected by a high dietary content of calcium phosphate or chelating agents such as sodium alginates. In other words, if you eat an apple when you're taking strontium, you're not going to absorb it. If you're eating rice or whole wheat or um, anything with a lot of calcium or phosphate, so that could be meat for, for phosphate, your peas, lentils, legumes of all sorts, you're not absorbing the strontium. So even though it's in the food, eh, you're not getting a lot. Studies have further demonstrated that intestinal strontium absorption is gradually increased during pregnancy and lactation, showing that mm, you need this for the baby to develop. So when you take strontium, you take it in between meals, and you don't take it with other supplements. You don't take it with your calcium or your vitamin D or anything like that. Now, they're talking about interactions with calcium. Studies of strontium, so they're looking at the kinetics of strontium and calcium, the two elements not only share some chemical and physical characteristics, but also exhibit similar involvements in a number of biological processes. So they're important for your body. So it is a ratio of strontium to calcium in the bone with a lot more calcium in the bone than strontium. So for instance, the ratio of strontium to calcium in your bone varies between 1 to 1,000 parts per million to 1 to 2,000. Um, 90, almost 99% of the strontium from your diet goes into your bone. So basically, strontium is for your bone. And a little over 99% of the calcium from your diet goes into your bone. So that's important. They're both needed for bone. You just don't take them at the same time. Problem is most people don't get enough strontium for their bone. So strontium is localized in the bone where the minerals exist, where the calcium exists and the magnesium and the phosphorus and a little bit of zinc that's in there. And they go on to say the highest concentration of strontium is in newly formed bone. That's why I told you when you take strontium, you create new wider bone that ex extends the matrix to which calcium can adhere to. So it's a good thing. How do you lose strontium? In your sweat, in your poop, but especially in your urine. So strontium excretion is through the kidneys. Therefore, somebody with reduced kidney function has to be careful with minerals in general, like strontium and phosphorus. They go on to say, once absorbed, strontium is preferentially deposited in bone and teeth. Okay, well, that's enough of that. <laughs> Let's go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, strontium and bone. So welcome to our episode, Strontium, a mineral for bone loss. My name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the chief scientific officer over here at Envite Health. We're going to talk about strontium and your bones. Um, this is the journal Calcified Tissue International. That's quite a moniker. But it's from Inserm in Paris, France. They come out with great, uh, very creative research. I'm telling you, they do great research. So here's what they said. I want to read you what they say and then translate for you. Trace elements closely chemically related to calcium, such as strontium, have pharmacological effects on bone when present at levels higher than those required for normal cell physiology. So in other words, when you take a strontium supplement, it's going to mean something for your bone. That's exactly what they say. Strontium was found to exert several effects on bone cells, in addition to its anti-resorptive activity, strontium was found to have anabolic activity in bone. And this may have significant beneficial effects on bone balance. Accordingly, strontium has been thought to have potential interest in the treatment of osteoporosis. So this is the days before they did the huge studies like the Tropos and the Sodi study that shows, yeah, calcium builds bone. So what did they mean? They mean that strontium has a dual activity on bone. It slows down the loss of bone and speeds up the rate of repair and building bone. That's very important for postmenopausal women and for older men, because older men can break their hip or break their spine also. Older men develop bone loss also. Um, when you're young, you're removing old bone, but at the same time, you're replacing it with new, healthy, strong bone. But as you grow older, that starts to fail you. And the bone removal cells the osteoclasts are still functioning, but the osteoblasts are not functioning at the level they used to. 
So now you have an imbalance. You're removing more bone than you're replacing, and eventually you have frank bone loss and a real increased risk of a fracture. And these fractures are not just painful and very expensive to treat and very costly to treat, taking many, many, many months, but they're quite dangerous. Um, spinal fracture can increase the risk of disability, we know that, but also of dying. And hip fracture even more so. And the major complications with a hip fracture are blood clots and bone infections. Um, I once read a report worldwide, not very long ago, 22% um, of women who suffer with a hip fracture die within the following year. That's a big figure. That's a lot worse than COVID-19. But beyond that, even the second and third year, they still have an increased risk of dying related to the hip fracture. It's just less of an increased risk. So there's a, um, a drop in the risk over, over the first three years. Men, it was even worse. Internationally, worldwide, 36% of men who suffer with a hip fracture die from complications. And that's over the first year. The second year, um, their trajectory is lesser, and the third year even less, but there's still an increased risk of dying from complications from a hip fracture three years after the fracture. So that's scary. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants all those trips to physical therapy. Nobody wants all that pain. Nobody wants all that, that cost. It costs $40,000 in general to treat a hip fracture. I don't know how much of that's going to be out of pocket, um, but it's also dangerous. So here's the journal Bone. Now it's McMaster University up in Hamilton, Canada, but also Ryerson University up in Toronto. It's a small study. It's the uh, Ryerson and McMaster University Strontium and Bone Research Study. That's, that's quite a moniker. Um, all volunteers had no previous intake of strontium prescription or strontium supplements. The longest volunteer participated for 1,535 days days, so that, what, that's a little over four years. Uh, the bone strontium levels continue to increase throughout the length of the study. They took strontium citrate capsules, which is our preferred form of supplementation, strontium citrate. Now, 90% of them had osteopenia or osteoporosis. Osteopenia is some loss of bone. You still have an increased risk of a fracture with osteopenia, but it's not as bad as osteoporosis, where there's a lot of loss of bone mineral content. And doctors really have to pay more attention to increasing bone mineralization, not just giving a drug, but making sure that we're building up minerals in the bone. And that's not all doctors, of course, but many doctors, frankly, they're not looking at bone mineralization. So the strontium citrate continued to work over the four plus year study period. It just got better and better. Uh, so here's arthritis and rheumatism, the journal. It's the University of Liege, which would be in Belgium. And they're looking at, I want to read you the title, the effects of long-term strontium ranolate, so that's an injection, treatment on the risk of non-vertebral, so that's fractures everywhere, and vertebral fractures, so that's spinal fractures, in postmenopausal osteoporosis. So it's a five-year randomized placebo-controlled human clinical trial. It's 5,100 postmenopausal women with osteoporosis. They received either strontium or placebo for five years. The risk of non-vertebral fracture was reduced by 15% in the strontium group compared with the placebo group. And it was safe. It was very safe. The risk of hip fracture was decreased by 43%. That's huge. The risk of hip fracture was re decreased by 43%, and the risk of vertebral fracture was decreased by 24% in the strontium group over five years, and it was increasingly safe, and it kept on working. You know, some things only work temporarily, and then they don't work any longer. Strontium keeps on working. Plus, strontium works in women over 80. Many of the drugs do not work in women over the age of 80. So there's a lot of different things going on with strontium. Um, here's a second, another study. It's from uh, rheumatology. That's Oxford, England. The University uh, Department of Rheumatology, Lillet Teaching Hospital in France. Uh, I'm going to read you what they said. And I'll once again translate as I go. Given its increasing incidence and serious complications, osteoporosis requires safe and effective long-term treatment. Strontium ranolate is an osteoporosis treatment with a unique mode of action. It has been investigated in the SOTI study. The SOTI study is the Spinal Osteoporosis Therapeutic Intervention. It's a huge study. 
And also the TROPO study, that's the treatment of peripheral osteoporosis. These are two major three-year-long human clinical trials. They're phase three randomized con placebo control in human clinical trials. And the SODI study, strontium, strontium treatment reduced the risk of vertebral fracture by 41%. Now that's, that's a spinal fracture. And a TROPO study, it reduced the risk of non-vertebral fracture by 16%. So that, that could be a, a hip fracture. No, that could be an ankle fracture or a wrist fracture. But it reduced the risk of hip fracture in patients at high risk of a hip fracture by 36%. And guess what? It does this within the first year of using it. It doesn't take a long time to, to reach a real benefit and a real protective level of bone improvement using strontium. So here's what they said. Unlike anti-resorptive agents, now anti-resorptive agents are most drugs used for osteoporosis and osteopenia, for bone loss. So uh, the um, bisphosphonate drugs are anti-resorptive drugs. They slow down the rate of bone loss, but they don't do anything for the rate of bone building. Strontium produced steady and significant bone mineral density increases. So that means you are building bone. So it's not just bone loss, it's bone building. So it increased, increases that correlated directly with decreases in vertebral and hip fracture risk. So as strontium improved the, the strength and the width of the bone, the risk of a hip fracture or a spinal fracture dropped. Strontium was also effective in patients with osteopenia, so even some bone loss, and younger postmenopausal age of patients age 50 to 65. Finally, strontium significantly attenuated height loss. Well, people lose inches as they lose bone, right? It prevented a loss of height and decreased back pain, which is interesting. We've seen this in several studies. When you have a, an osteoporotic spine with bone mineral loss and spinal arthritis, strontium stabilizes the spine and takes away the pain. That's very interesting. We've seen that in, um, in the same thing in the knee. They said the safety profile of strontium was almost similar to placebo in both trials. In other words, it was as safe, basically, as a sugar pill. Uh, and ours is even safer. It's strontium citrate capsules. It's like 100% safe. Uh, so here's what they said. Thus, thus strontium demonstrates broad-spectrum safety and efficacy and reducing the risk of both vertebral and non-vertebral, including hip fractures, in a wide variety of patients and should be considered as a first-line option to treat women in, at the risk of osteoporotic factors, whatever their age, whatever the severity of disease, and whatever their risk factors. For, what's a risk factor? Well, uh, obesity is connected to losing more bone and a heightened risk of fracture. So is diabetes. Diabetes weakens your bones. It's not just your sugar that's a problem. A lot of things go along in diabetes. So they're saying basically any woman with any level of bone problem at any age, strontium will help them. And it's very safe. Um, interesting things they're saying here. L uh, um, helping with the spinal pain if you have bone loss in your spine and helping prevent a loss of height. So let's talk about that. Let's, let, let's go to a quick break. I want to come back. What happened if you already took um, um, a bisphosphonate like alendronate, Fosamax? What happens with strontium? We'll discuss that. We're talking about uh, the mineral strontium and bone health, and it's, it, it, it's very effective in helping bone, um, especially in older women where other things are not working. It helps prevent a loss of height. It helps stabilize the, uh, the hip bone and reduces hip fracture risk. It helps stabilize the uh, spinal bone and helps prevent a loss of height and even helps with spinal pain. That's pretty cool. Uh, the capsule strontium citrate has been extremely, extremely safe, as safe as sugar pills, placebo, we call them sugar pills, as safe as placebo, we used to call them sugar pills, as safe as placebo in human clinical trials. So what happens if you took a bisphosphonate? Well, I'm gonna talk about two issues with a bisphosphonate. One, it definitely reduces your risk of a hip fracture. There's no doubt about it. Bisphosphonate drugs like alendronate reduce your risk of a hip fracture. But there are some issues. For instance, if you've been using a bisphosphonate and you go on strontium, strontium still works, but not as much. It works a little bit less, but it'll still help. The second thing is, there's a weird situation with bisphosphonates where women get this weird, uh, unusual thigh bone fracture. Uh, when they gave them strontium after the thigh bone fracture, it, it, it really sped up healing of the fracture. Not that that's common, it's very rare. 
Okay. Osteonecrosis of the jaw is a different condition. Osteonecrosis of the jaw means you're on one of these bisphosphonates and you had dental work and dental disease, gum disease, etc., and you lost jaw bone tissue. And by the way, strontium can help prevent loss of jaw, jaw bone tissue, and strontium also helps with dental implants. Strontium, melatonin, and a couple of other nutrients help with dental implants, because sometimes they don't take too well. But that's just a little side information there. I should really do a, a show on dental implants. Here's the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. It's the Department of Epidemiology, Public Health, and Health Economics, because things, things like you know, a hip fracture costs a lot of money, University of Liege. Uh, they're looking at the use of strontium in 5,091 postmenopausal women with osteoporosis. It's a double-blind placebo-controlled study. And uh, they're doing a, an analysis over a three-year period of treatment. Um, the relative risk for all non-vertebral fractures dropped by 16% when you use strontium. And 19% for major fragility fractures. So that's a fracture of the hip, the wrist, the pelvis, the sacrum, the ribs, the sternum, the clavicle, the humerus. And strontium randomly treated patients in comparison with the placebo among women at high risk of a hip fracture. So these are women uh, age 74 or older. And they had femoral neck bone mineral density T scores less than or equal to negative three. So what does that mean? Um, the femoral neck is where the uh, thigh bone goes into the hip and that's where you usually have a hip fracture. So these are women 74 years of age or older at a real risk of a hip fracture, which is very dangerous. And they had a terrible T-score. They really lost a lot of bone. Typically, they had a negative 2.4. That means comparing a 74-year-old to like a 35-year-old, they lost a lot of bone compared to a 35-year-old. Now, I don't know why they don't do the Z-score also. The Z-score compares apples to apples, so it would compare a 74-year-old woman's bone to another 74-year-old woman. But they're only using T-scores. I think you need both. It kind of gives you a better image of what's going on. So here's what they found in this study. Um, the relative risk of a hip fracture was um, reduced by, well, um, 64%. The relative risk of a hip fracture was reduced by 64% in these very elderly women who had a serious risk of hip fracture. And the relative risk of a vertebral fracture was reduced by 39%. So hip fracture risk reduced by 64%. Spinal fracture risk reduced by 39%. In the 3,640 women where they took spinal x-rays, um, they found strontium strongly increased bone mineral density. Strongly increased bone mineral density. It improved bone mineral density in the femoral neck. That's where you have a hip fracture by 8.2%. And it increased the total the total hip bone mineral density by 9.8%. I mean, this is placebo versus strontium. Strontium is the real thing. So let's do a call to action. You're a 73-year-old woman. You've been on Fosamax, Alindronate for three years, and your bones really haven't improved that much. You've been taking your calcium and vitamin D. Well, bones are not just calcium and vitamin D and a drug. They're much more complex than that. Um, you need a, an alkaline type diet. So you need to have your fruits and your vegetables and your green leafy vegetables like your lettuce for bone health because that makes the, the blood more alkaline and that helps prevent. See, the blood's supposed to have a slightly um, alkaline pH to it. And if it becomes acid, you could go into a coma and die. It's called, it's called um, lactic acidosis or ketoacidosis. It's more common in diabetics because of the drugs and because of the acidity of their blood with all the sugar. In any event, um, so if your blood is becoming a little acidic because you're not eating enough alkaline forming foods, um, the, blood, the, 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 the blood has to borrow minerals from your bone to make it more alkaline and you lose bone. So the first step is a good diet and some exercise and some green tea because green tea helps build bone. We've gone through this uh, in some of our other podcasts. Now, beyond that, you need a whole bunch of different nutrients for bone. You need um, calcium, magnesium, 
uh, you should get those from a supplement because you probably won't get enough from your food to really take care of bone loss. Um, you need phosphorus, but that's easy to get from your food. You don't have to worry about phosphorus. You need vitamin D and vitamin K. So you need a lot of things. You need collagen because that's the superstructure of bone that calcium attaches to. But add strontium. Two things. Take strontium away from food and away from supplements because a lot of these things can bind to the strontium and then you won't absorb it. So it's not going to do you any use. Don't overdo the strontium. For instance, we have a strontium citrate. You would take three capsules once a day with just water. Uh, the closest to food is an hour before meals to two hours after meals. That's the closest to food. So a lot of women, I tell them, just, eh, just take it up at time. Uh, what else builds bone? Hey, melatonin. And believe it or not, vitamin E, you only need a little bit. The amount in your multivitamin should do it if it's natural vitamin E. Vitamin E is also involved with building bone. But um, melatonin builds bone. So if you're older, you're not sleeping at night, get on some melatonin, 3 milligrams, about 15 minutes before bedtime with a glass of water. That'll help you build bone. And once again, three strontium capsules, you could take it with the melatonin 15 minutes before bed with some water. They won't interfere with each other. So thank you for tuning into the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of the episodes wherever you listen to your podcast, or you could go to invitehealth.com and our cover page. You scroll down and you'll see a big icon for podcast and you, you click on that and there's well over 200 podcasts now. There's about 230 podcasts. Leave me a review. Please subscribe. You could follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just go to Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I hope to see you another time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you.